Let's move on to something called a couple. A couple. What is a couple? Right, we've been seeing, we've been studying moments. A couple is um, two equal, FF equal, but opposite forces that are so that they're parallel, right? But they're equal, they're opposite, but they are separated by a distance d. They are non-collinear, so equal, opposite, and non-collinear, meaning they're not in the same line, and they're acting on this object. That is a couple. And this, this setup over here causes something called a couple moment. Okay? Now, let's look at how this, these two forces, equal, opposite, and not collinear, how do they affect this object, this body? Well, let's add up the, the forces. F minus F gives us zero. So when we have this situation, there is no translation of this object, this body, right? So if you've got F and minus F, you've got 100 Newton minus 100 Newton, 1 Newton minus 1 Newton. There's a zero um, resultant force. Okay, The only effect this has on the object, on the body, is to produce a tendency of rotation. The only effect is to want to rotate this object. Okay. So let's see how it works. Let's take moments about some arbitrary point O. All right. So let's look at the use the scalar method. Um, so we got F times A plus D. F times A plus D. That's what we got there. And we're choosing counterclockwise as positive. And then we got minus F. Right. We got this force. And we got A. So the magnitude is FA and it's going in the clockwise direction. So we put a minus there. Now what happens if you add this up? We got F times A. We got FD minus FA. So the FA minus FA, that cancels and we're left with FD. So the couple, the moment due to the couple is equal to FD. Okay, well what's so interesting about this? Look here. What does that D refer to? That D is simply the distance, the perpendicular distance between the two lines of action. Do you see that it has nothing to do with this point O? If I went and chose that as my point O, and I did exactly the same exercise, I would come to exactly the same result. That if I have two forces that are equal and opposite and not collinear, then number one, the, the forces that cancel out, meaning uh, there's no translation, there's no tendency to accelerate in, in the direction of the forces. But also, this moment becomes independent of, take, of the point that you take moments about. Because this FA minus FA, you can see that it cancels. And all that's left is the magnitude of one of the forces times the perpendicular distance. Alright, so it says the magnitude of the couple is independent of the distance A. So wherever you take it about, it's independent. Okay, so the moment of a couple has the same value for all moment centers. Okay, now let's look at the vector method. Okay, same two forces, uh, some arbitrary point O, and now let's calculate the moment. We've got RA cross F, RA cross F, counterclockwise, okay, We've got plus RB 
cross F or cross minus F. So you can see that that's going clockwise. All right. But anyways, the, these are vector methods. So the, the direction comes out just in the, in, the, in the mathematics. And so we see that if we rearrange this, we get RA minus RB cross F. And what is RA minus RB? RA, so let's, let's look here. RB plus R equals RA. Or RA equals RB plus R. Okay, let's just write it out here. RA equals RB plus R. All right, we're just adding up the vectors. So R, this position vector from any point on, on this force, to any point on this force, R is RA minus RB. So, what is this RA minus RB? It is simply the position vector between the two forces. And again, we see it becomes independent of taking moments about some point O. Again, the moment expression contains no reference to the moment center O, and therefore is the same for all moment centers. Does that make sense? It's the same for all moment centers. Okay. Now, I think that's, that's good enough for now.